Hi everyone, this is Nate with another Backcountry Beer Review. Right now I'm on Tatia Peak in the Caja del Rio, which is the high plateau just to the west of Santa Fe. It's a pretty awesome peak. We have great views, Cochiti Lake. It's actually La Bajada behind me, which is the original 1926 alignment of Route 66. Uh, it was that alignment until 1932 when they moved it over to where, you know, where I-25 is now. Then after that, it just missed Santa Fe altogether. But before that, it was El Camino Real, which is a uh, old Spanish trade route that would link El Paso and uh, Santa Fe, Española area. Before that, pre-Columbian trade route. So it's very cool. This is a very incredibly historic place. Very beautiful, too. It's uh, not a super popular place, but uh, kind of like it that way. It's really really remote, beautiful, despite being extremely close to Santa Fe, Los Alamos, and Albuquerque. Beer we're reviewing today is by Second Street Brewery in Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's uh, actually a vintage beer. It's their 2018 Skookum Barley Wine Style Ale. Obviously, when you're talking about uh, aging beers in a cellar, barley wine is pretty much one of the canonical beers for doing that. It's just high alcohol, intense flavors, really lends itself to that process. I actually did not buy this in 2018, I want to say I bought this. They were selling some vintage barley wines in 2020 or 2021, and I bought some. Spear is one of my favorite beers by Second Street. Uh, I look forward to its annual release. They have not announced it yet, unfortunately. Usually, I think last year they did it around December, maybe even January, and it's mid-January right now while I'm filming this, they have not announced anything yet. But yeah, it's one of my favorite beers. Uh, I'll skip the whole thing about Skookum on the can because it's sort of irrelevant. Let's see, it says, uh, an annual release intended for immediate enjoyment, but also for hiding away for extended aging. From the British Isles lineage of strong ales, this West Coast style barley wine is big and bold, both in flavor and in alcohol. Uh, and then there's a little bit about Second Street as a brewery. It's double dried hopped with mosaic, citra, German magnum, Chinook, and Cascade hops. Like I think I said already, I bought this in like 2020 or 2021. They were selling off some of their vintage barley wine ales that they had uh, in stock and I picked it up. I have not held it since 2018, but it's pretty crazy to think that this is a four or five year old beer, depending on when they released it in 2018. Let's open it up, give it a taste. All right, it is time for a sip. I also want to apologize. I keep forgetting I'm wearing the lapel mic, not the uh, external mic like I usually use. And with that, I kind of have to shout to make my words really clear to overcome the wind noise. The lapel mic, I think, is going to be much better for the beer reviews. Not so much for the hiking videos, but for the beer reviews, I think it's going to be better. Uh, but I have to remind myself, you don't need to shout. So if I start shouting, forgive me. Um, this is also take two. The last take, which you might see some of, depending on how this take goes, is very much besieged by a toddler. So <laughs> he seems to be pretty occupied by his uh, veggie fries right now, his veggie straws, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so let's get to the review before he changes his mind. Really an incredible beer. I'll just straight out say that. I mean, the Skookum slash Barley Wine series is one of my favorite beers in general. I think I, uh, I think I was on a stream somewhat recently with the Beer Brackets guys and I, and I said as much. Really a solid beer, a solid winter beer. Um, and a nice, you know, they, they usually release it at, right after Christmas. So it's kind of a nice like, oh, Christmas is over, New Year's is over. Uh, it's kind of the sad part of winter. Then they come and release that and you're like, man, this it's a nice treat. The flavor on this beer just, this is why, I mean, I just love barley wines. It, it's so earthy. It is like comically earthy. It's, if I had to describe it, you know, woodsy, like woodsy, earthy, almost mushroomy, which is how earthy it is. Um, a little bit of, you know, I, I was watching a wine tasting video relatively recently and somebody used the phrase forest floor. That's such a great phrase. I would, um, I usually, I think I kind of describe that as like uh, dead leaves. Maybe that's a little bit different. Maybe forest floor is more like pungent. Uh, so I'd, I'd call this kind of like uh, yeah, dead leaves, fall, walking on a trail in fall with all the dead brown leaves on the ground. You're just stepping on them, getting that aroma. I'm also getting like antique furniture for sure. That's that just straight woodsy, uh, mahogany, furniture, cedar furniture. It's generally like, like going to an antique store, going to your grandma's house and in that room that nobody's used in a decade. Um, it's also, you know, the hops are just 
can I taste the age? I said, yeah, I, I would say yes, because the hop, just everything is so mellow. That's the thing when I age beers or when I have beers that, are, that have been aged and I taste them, it's just like, there's no rough edges. Everything is mellow. Um, and it's all so delicate and so smooth. And like most barley wines, it's pretty, it's got a lot of residual sweetness. They did, they made a British style barley wine last year, which I reviewed. And that beer did not have nearly the hop oomph that, that the West Coast or this one does. And with that one, it was super sweet, but in a, in a really good way. This one probably has similar amounts of sweetness, but there's just so much else going on that it detracts from that a little bit. And when it comes to the sweetness, I, you know, I, I'd say raisin, maybe honey. So it's kind of it reminds me of like a black tea with honey almost. Um, getting a little bit of like marshmallow even, just that like carbonized sweetness. Um, and, and that brings me to the bitterness. It's not overly bitter, uh, which is kind of what I would expect from a beer that's four to five years old. Yeah, just really stellar. Highly recommend if you can get your hands on it to try one. If you can't, fingers crossed that they're still releasing it this year uh, and you can try this year's edition. That's about it for me. Cheers and have a backcountry beer for me.